Hey everybody, today I want to talk about the biggest red flag that you can notice to spot the narcissist or the psychopath coming from a mile away so you don't get sucked into the abusive cycle, right? And this is the question that everybody asks at the end. It's like, how did I get sucked in? How didn't I see it, right? Well, the answer is that it didn't look like abuse at first. In fact, it looked really nice. And that's why I want to explain this to you. And this is about the difference between flattery and complimenting. It's not the same thing. And it's really important to recognize the difference because that's exactly how you can get pulled into an emotional manipulator like a narcissist or a psychopath through the flattery. So flattery, what is that? Flattery is essentially like shallow praise. It's very calculated. It expects something in return, right? There's like a need for approval. There's some sort of like trust seeking with the other person. It's very mechanical. It's very false, right? In the dictionary, it's defined as excessive praise. And it's also defined as insincere and almost always having an ulterior motive. So essentially when someone is flattering you, they want something from you. And the word to flatter comes from the old French word flatter, which actually means like to stroke with the hand or caress, right? So when you flatter someone, it's like you're stroking their ego, right? To get what you want. And that's what they're doing with you at the beginning. A compliment is like a genuine expression of respect or admiration. It's saying something nice about someone that you notice. It's not expecting anything return. It's not like I compliment you and then I expect you to compliment me right back or to say the same thing right back or to find something to say about me. That's not what it's about. Complimenting is a genuine expression of admiration. It's spontaneous. It's given freely. It's very natural. Right? So when you first meet a narcissist and a sociopath, psychopath, there's like this intense part at the beginning of that relationship that they call the idealization or the love bombing. And this is when they're like constantly bombarding you with communication, like texts, phone calls, drawn out long phone calls, long emails. They're spending all their time with you. They want to know what you're doing all the time. Essentially, they're trying to secure your love and trust right? And in during this time, they're going to be constantly flattering you. They're going to be telling you all sorts of wonderful stuff about yourself, right? And so what they're doing is they're essentially warming you up to become this sort of like reliable supply of nourishment to provide them with what they need, which is the praise and the admiration and the attention. They will get you addicted to that pleasure and gratification, right? Your brain gets high on dopamine, on oxytocin, right? And then they'll also, as they're flattering you, they'll very subtly notice and learn what your vulnerabilities and what your insecurities are. And then they're gonna hone in on those and flatter those over time. So what's happening is essentially you're learning to transfer your sense of approval from inside yourself to this person, right? And so this is the first stage, you know, maybe you meet this person, they're constantly giving you all of this attention and attention and attention and telling you how amazing you are. And then at some point, as you learned, right, that flattery very quickly turns into 180 degrees, right? And now like maybe it's like it's subtle digs at first and then it just becomes like cutting criticism. You always want to be aware of when this person is genuinely complimenting you genuinely saying something nice to you about you or when they have an ulterior motive when they're just trying to stroke your ego to get you to give them something to get you to do something for them this is really really important to recognize the difference between the flattery and the criticism and your responsibility is to stop that immediate instinctual urge to transfer your approval to that person just like to melt into the flattery right? You want to know who you are. You want to have that self-esteem, that confidence in yourself, that you're not relying on someone else to give you that. Then you don't have to fall for it. Then you don't have to melt in front of them, right? So that's the thing. It's like the narcissist can't survive without that. They can't survive without the constant flattery and attention and adoration, and they always want to look good. And that's why they're starting to flatter you first, because they want this in return. And then eventually, if you're not giving them that supply, they're going to punish you. They're either going to start putting you down or using cruelty, humiliation, and criticism toward you to get what they want. 
like maybe you've even like observed this in social situations. You walk into a cafe or something and typically you'll see this more with groups of women and you'll see like a group of women together and this is just like, I mean, it's like a jizz fest of flattery. It's just like everybody's going around flattering everybody else and it's just like disgusting. Like you almost want to just like vomit when you hear it and see it because it's so fake. You know, it's not real, but they're getting off on it. It's like they're feeding each other's egos, you know. You don't want to get involved in social scenes like that because when it goes to that extreme in that direction, it's going to flip in the other extreme, in the other direction. And it's going to start very subtly, those friendships, you know. It's going to start very subtly and it's going to erode into like full-on criticism, cruelty, humiliation, cutting down, and, and you don't want to be part of that. And, and sometimes like that initial idealization phase, that love bombing phase, sometimes that goes on for a really long time. You know, it could be like a period of weeks. It could be a period of months. It could be a period of years. And, and the difference really, I think, is like it has to do with the narcissist eyeing you up and they're trying to decide, are you going to be the person who's just going to be there for like a short while and then you're eventually going to realize what's going on and leave? Or are you going to be that enabler? that they can keep in their life and always have there to blame, to take responsibility, to doubt him or herself, right? And accept all the responsibility and the blame of what's going on, to make excuses, to always forgive and keep staying and coming back for more. Or are you the kind of person that's going to realize what's happening and going to leave? So if they think that you're going to be there for a really long time, then they're going to butter you up to be the enabler. And it could be years and years. I've talked to people who have been in decades long marriages and they didn't see that flip, that other side in their partner for a really long time. You know, sometimes it's only a few weeks and, and then it goes from the flattery directly into, into like the putting you down phase. So, so that's when that person knows that you're just kind of like transitional. You're like a transitional supply to them. You're not a long-term thing. They're just going to kind of get, get in and out and get what they want from you. And then they know that you're going to leave or they're just going to discard you before you can discard them. So what's the answer? What do you do? I think it's pretty simple. And I think the advice is this simple. Are you ready? Slow down. Okay. People talk about the slow food movement. So how about starting the slow love movement, right? Give this person some time to show you who they are. And if you're afraid that that person's not going to hang out, that they're going to leave, if you want to take your time to really get to know them before like you jump in bed with them or before you go on vacation with them or before you move in with them or before you become best friends, if that person is so anxious to like lock you in and lock you down, not a good sign, right? That's definitely a red flag. Let them go. And the thing is that people paint themselves over time. So give them the time to do that and resist the urge to see what you want to see. Observe their communication. How are they communicating with you? What's it like? How are they communicating with other people? What can you observe? What's their communication like with their friends and their family? You know, are they constantly, constantly, constantly bombarding you with this intense amount of attention at the beginning, even though it seems like positive attention? If that's the case, that's your answer. That's definitely a red flag. So that's probably the most important thing you want to be aware of from the get-go, from the point where you just meet a person, right? You want to give them the opportunity to show you how they're communicating with you and observe that and see if it's meeting these red flags, you know? Are they offering you excessive flattery? Do they expect you to flatter them in return? And that could be a new friend that you meet too. You know, maybe your friend is even like flat out telling you that like, he or she loves to be around groups of people that are flattering each other all the time. And don't you just love that? No, you know, and what they're doing is they're telling you indirectly, I need you to flatter me. Can you go ahead and flatter me? Because I really need this to survive. And that's just like the biggest red flag of the narcissist. So I hope that's helpful for you. I just wanted to put that out there because I keep hearing this over and over again. I've been thinking back to like so many past relationships, you know, intimate relationships, friendships, roommates, neighbors, etc. 
you know, with narcissists and sociopaths and psychopaths. And I kept thinking like, what was that one sign? Like the one thing from the beginning that just repeated over and over again. And this is it. It's the flattery, right? And you don't want to be like your abuser either. So keep that in mind. You know, when you're approaching your own social situations, like are you offering flattery or are you offering genuine compliments? So I hope that was helpful for you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. If you liked it, just feel free to hit like, share it with someone you think might benefit from this information. And if there's anything I can help you with, please let me know. Remember, you are not alone. We are going to get through this together. Viva la revolución!